Hey everybody, welcome back. What's up, nerds? Here with Jason Monday, and we are in the second series of teaching you guys how to play Magic the Gathering. Second episode. Yes, what did I say? Second series. Second this series. Is the this first is the series. whole this is series. The only series. And um, we're going to probably get into the game. If you guys haven't seen the first episode of this and you want to get into Magic, go and watch the first one first. Uh, it'll be linked below. It'll be the previous episode. Click that, watch that first, and then come back here. If you are... Uh, here to watch the second episode, then we'll, we'll welcome. We are still holding uh, our first hand. This is uh, a red deck, a full red deck that we are playing against uh, a full blue deck. And we explained pretty much what all the different card types are. And in this episode, what are we going to talk about? So this episode, uh, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about the uh, different zones, the uh, deck, your deck, the hand that you will draw and be playing cards out of, and then also the main like game field yeah. down on the table. There's there's a bunch of different zones in this game, but there are some very important ones. So like Jason said, your hand is a very important zone because like how many cards do you have in your hand? Your deck is a zone, um, and then everything that you have out in the field, there's like the creature zone there's like the the land zone the graveyard is his own zone um and then your opponent has all of those different zones as well and the cards exist in those uh areas as you play so cards can exist inside of your deck they can exist inside of your hand and i know that might sound a little bit weird but it's important because all of these cards say stuff on them like if the card is in your graveyard then this happens so you have to know what the zones are to fully understand this game so um yeah and then also uh, another thing we'll be going over is just the different phases of the game different uh parts of each turn um so yeah Okay. Should we just go ahead so, and get started? We will. So, uh, as you can see next to Jason, it says that Talrand is going to play first. So That's Tal our enemy. Talrand is is up there. He's above Jason. The blue He's guy. That, that blue guy. Smurf. He's gonna play first. So that means that we have to watch him play, and and then um, we will get a turn. So we have a chance here. This is just a, a very particular thing about the game: is when you draw your first seven cards to start the game, you can uh, draw a new hand. That's what's called taking a mulligan, just like in golf. Like if you slice a ball or something like that, you can take a mulligan. There's a certain amount of, you get one mulligan for free. So if we didn't like our hand, so if we drew our hand and we had like no land in our hand, land is important in the game. You have to have a little bit of land. Otherwise you can't spend anything to play your cards. So we can take uh, what's called a mulligan. What do you think? Should we take a mulligan? Um, I like our hand. It's it's a pretty decent hand at this it, point. It's I mean, not it, the best hand because we only have two yeah. land, but when you start your turn, you draw a card, so we have a chance of getting more yeah, land. I'd say it's not it's not amazing, but it's it could be much worse. So, so let's just let's just stick with it. So I'm gonna press A. I'm gonna keep the hand, and now it's his turn. So what's happening up there uh, is he just laid a land. So yeah, for his turn, he he did not get to draw a card because he went first. That's kind of one bad thing about going first. In in this game, uh, when somebody plays something, uh, you get a chance to respond to it. So what's happening right now is you can see, I'm going to just go over to his side. So um, I just switched over to his view. And you can see that he... Uh, Play, he put down one land mm -hmm. and then he turned it sideways which means he spent it it's also called tap tapping yeah and you can only lay one land down per turn yep so and you get multiple turns throughout the game yeah so as the as the turns go on you get more opportunities to lay down land meaning that you can play more and more cards or bigger cards yep so he spent the one and uh, he's gonna play this creature. So let's take a look at this creature. Uh, notice how it only costs one blue. Up in the very top right of the card, it costs one blue. And this thing is has zero attack, so it's really not that threatening. And it has four health, so that means it's it's um it's kind of a strong uh, blocker. Like it can block things. So if I'm trying to come at him really hard, it's more for protection than. 
It's like a defensive card more than a, an very, aggressive card. Very defensive little shellish creature. So, um, nothing we can do about it. So we're just gonna go ahead and let him have it. I'll go back over to our view. So now this is this is our side. It's the end of his turn now. So now our turn just started, and as you, you drew a card, we, you saw we get a, we got to draw a card. So so you, the first thing you always generally want to do is let's talk about what's what are these right through here. Because this is the, this little bar. Oh, okay, yeah. So there's the different phases. The start phase is well, it's two let's things see. happen in the start yeah, phase. Basically, you, uh, first, I think the first thing that happens technically is everything that you have becomes ready. Yeah, if it it's readies. Tapped, like at the beginning of our opponent's next turn, his his uh, blue resource will ready so that he can use it again yeah and say he tried to attack with his zero attack little crab it would then become exhausted or tapped and then at the beginning of his next turn it would become ready again so anyway then the main phase is the next thing to the, an but another thing that happens in the start phase is you draw a card so every time single time that you start your game this little start phase like jason said everything readies and you draw a card, and then you jump into the main phase, which Jason's about to tell you about. Yeah. So during the main phase, you can, if you have a land in your hand, you can lay the land down. So, so let's go ahead and go do ahead that. And do that. So now, what that means is that we have the ability to play any card that has a cost of one, mm -hmm. um, if we so choose. But we don't have. We any. don't have any of those in our hand. So basically. As you can see on the little bar over there on the bottom, it says end already there, because... There was nothing for us to do. It knows that we can't do anything. It knows we have no card to play. We don't have anything out that we can attack with or any abilities that we can use that are already out. Yeah. So it's and, like, yeah. you're done. This as, is all you can do. As slow as we are going through this and explaining things to you, the first few turns of this game, once you get to know the game and you get better at the game, they're very fast. Like the first two or three turns in the game is usually, it can be as quick as drawing a card, laying down a resource, and just saying that my turn my turn is done. So like, as, as fast as that. Like we could have, if we were just playing and not explaining to you, we would have just been like, all right, lay a resource, You're, it's now it's your turn to the other person. So it's like very, very fast. So if some of you guys are watching this being like, oh, it's like an overload of things. We're explaining like every single little thing in detail for you so that when we actually start playing the game, you will be able to understand what is happening. Mm. So now it's the end of our turn and it's going to be our opponent's turn. So watch, as you'll see, like Jason was saying, this land will become untapped. You'll see it happen. And then he can put down another land and then he can, he can spend something that costs two. So he just keeps getting stronger and stronger as the game moves on. And the same thing happens for us. We just keep getting stronger and stronger as the, the game goes. So when you first start, just like nothing. We're like have yeah, nothing. Really weak. Like we have nothing out. There's nothing we can do. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and end our turn. So as his turn starts, you see that resource become ready again at the top of the screen. He, lays, he lays another lays, land. There's another one down. So now he could either play two cards that cost one, or he could play one card that cost two, but he either had nothing to play or chose not to play something. So now it's our turn, and he still has two open resources on his side. Oh, another thing to keep in mind is that uh, the little numbers underneath the, his big circle picture there, the 52, that is how many cards left remain in his deck. It's right here. That he hasn't, uh, hasn't gotten yet. And then what's this and then number? And the now? five is how many are in his hand, how many that he has right now. Yes. So, and then the other one, on our side, is we have 66 cards left in the deck and we have eight cards in our hand right now. And as I switch because sides, the views, yeah. now we can see on this so side. now we're back on our side. So we have 66 cards in our deck and eight uh, in our hand right now. One thing to keep in mind is at the end of your turn, if you have more than seven cards in your Somehow. hand, Somehow you get more than like seven Like right cards. now we have eight because we haven't played, haven't anything played any cards yet and we just drew one for the start of our turn. So at the end of your turn, if you end the turn and have more than seven cards, you have to discard down to seven. So if we were to do nothing, not lay a land and not play any cards right now, we would have to discard one. But that's not going to happen because we yeah. can lay a down a land 
and that will make us safe from having to discard it. Yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and and lay a land here. Um, let's go and put that down. So now um, I'm just gonna. You can like freeze time in here, and that's what I just did uh, because it was about to end our turn for us because they, they thought that basically nothing could be done. But if you look, now this card has the big orange border around it. When you play the actual physical card game, your cards aren't gonna glow like this. But in this game, it shows that it says basically, hey, you can play this card now because you have enough resources available to play it. So if I wanted to, we could play this right now. We could like blast the other guy for three damage. But there are better uses for this because we can blast some of his creatures. Now this thing does three damage to a player or a creature. His little guy up here has four health. So we could take him down to one health, but he would survive. So it's not worth doing it right yet. And also, something to keep in mind is if you do damage a creature, at the end of that turn, I guess at the start of the next turn, they will go back up to their full health. All the creatures so, go str all the way back up to their maximum yeah. health. They so basically if, if heal we were, every turn. If we were to play our card and deal three damage to that guy, you know, you might think, oh, well, he's that much closer to dying. But if we had no other way to do one more damage to him, he would just regenerate that back up to four on the next turn. And yep. so it's like a waste of a card. Yeah. It would be it, we would be wasting the card to play it right now, so we're not going to. So we are about to get into Talran's next turn as we move on. Um, let us know in the comments what you guys are thinking about um, if we're explaining this well enough, or if you have any specific questions. Jason or myself will come back in and we will just answer them for you, or we'll just say we're going to be answering that in a future episode. Um, another thing too. Uh, I'll probably be putting this in the description. It's probably going to be best if you guys watch this at 720p resolution because stuff in this game is so small. Yeah. So go a lot seven, of text. 720p full screen if you're trying to learn about this game with us um, as we move on because it's just going to be much easier for you guys to see. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye.